How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Ruffle Rallets, and today I want to talk about why the new Pokemon game in 2024 might likely be Johto, or a remake of Johto, just a game based on Johto. In this video, I'm going through multiple different uh, sections as to why it might be it. I already did a video on Unova, and if you're watching the compilation of all these, then you probably already saw me talk about this earlier in this video. But basically, what are we talking about? Well, a new Pokemon 2024 game being based on Johto. And there's loads of stuff. I'm going to talk about different hints from Leaker, we're going to talk about references to Johto, we're going to talk about why it might release and when it might release, and what kind of game is it going to be? Is it going to be a remake, remaster, what kind of game? So, if you guys are ready, let's get started right off the bat with of course, the leakers. Now, in terms of leaks about a Johto game, there hasn't really been a lot. Like, when you look up stuff from, like, Riddler Koo, for example, who's a legitimate leaker, um, like, he hasn't really said much about Johto. Like, there hasn't really been a lot of things mentioned about Johto in general. Like, I haven't really seen a lot of Johto-related things at all. The only thing that might be related to it is a tweet that he made called Original Soup, Original Taste, which is a reference specifically to the releases of BDSP. Now, what do I talk about this? Well, basically, it is a, I think, Japanese or Chinese. I'm, I could be wrong. Again, don't quote me on this, but it is basically an idiom or a joke name they have for BDSP because of how bad they thought BDSP was. Because, yes, BDSP was a legitimately, you know, actually original, you know, remake. It was a proper remake, but it also then had the exact same taste and it kind of like didn't really taste that good for most people because people didn't really enjoy BDSP that much. So it's a bit of a joke. And the fact that he tweeted that could be implying that if we're getting a Johto game, that it might be a similar situation. He even posted a tweet called 2024 predictions. And in that image, he posted something very interesting. He posted an image of, I think he posted, I could be wrong here. He posted an image of Johto, Kanto, Paldea, and Unova, which is very, very strange. The fact that he included all of those, right, all four of those, is very odd. Now, why would he include Paldea in there? And I actually have a prediction. I'm going to break this down exactly right now. I think what he means by this tweet is as follows. And I'm going to put this on screen here, and I'm actually going to... Um, maybe even do a little bit of uh, Photoshop work to explain it. I think that if we go in order of what these are, because he said 2024, which is very strange, I think this is what he's talking about. Because in the bottom right, we have Paldea. What do we mean by Paldea? I think that's a reference to the Indigo Discs final epilogue, or the final epilogue for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, which is called the, uh, like, the Mochi story, right? The epilogue Mochi story. This one has already been announced. It's officially been announced to be releasing in when? 2024, on 11th of January next year. So he says 24 per, per, 2024 prediction. Well, it's all of these. Even Scarlet and Violet's getting a new thing next year, which is that final epilogue. So that is what he means there. Then what does he mean by the Unova one. Well, that is going to be, in my prediction, like I already made a video about Unova and my predictions for Unova. I think that's going to be specifically the Paradox game. I think that's what he's referring to right there. It's like the Paradox game. That's all that that is referencing. That's at least what my thought process is on that. That's the new Unova game, which is going to be happening. But then you might be wondering, why is Kanto and Johto there? Well, it's because for those of you who haven't played any Johto games before, if you haven't played Pokemon, uh, you know, Gold, Silver, Crystal, or Heart, Gold, Soul, Silver, if you have played them, you already know. But if you haven't played them, you should should know that the game features both. Gold, Silver, Crystal has both Johto and Kanto in it, which would be perfect for a single game, right? It's like what we've already had before. Gold, Silver, Crystal had both Kanto and Johto, right? Or Johto and Kanto, depending on what way you want to put it. But Johto was first, and then Kanto was the second region you could do in the same game. Guess what? Hard Gold, Soul, Silver, which were remakes, also had Kanto and Johto both in it. So if they're remaking the Johto region, it's only to be expected that Kanto will get a remake as well. So I think this image right here is exactly what we mean, like basically proves, like I think this image proves that we're going to be getting all of these. All of these are going to be happening next year, in 2024, which kind of puts some of my speculation about when the Unova game might be releasing, might put that one a little bit in jeopardy, but I still think that this is making the most sense to me. Like, I think this makes total sense that we're going to get a game that is Kanto Johto, right? Because that's what always the Johto remake, like, that's what Johto always is about. If you have a Johto game, you almost have to have Kanto with it because they did it once and now they have to do it forever because they already did it for Gold, Silver, Crystal, Heart, Gold, Soul, Silver. It's five games that featured both Johto plus 
plus the Kanto region extra with it, right? So I think that's what this image is telling us. I'm pretty sure. I am 100% certain that's what this image is supposed to say. So at least from leakers, that's pretty much all information we really have. I don't think there's really been much else mentioned from leakers in regards to this exact subject. I haven't really seen much else being mentioned from this subject, but I think that's pretty much where I think that ends. I don't really know if there's much else that's been mentioned. Like I said, there are a few things maybe that have been brought up, but for the most part, I think that pretty much is the only big one that we have. I don't really think there is much else that we can mention about this, um, but I still think it's good to know. I th still think this is like definitely enough of a big hint. This is definitely enough of a big reference that I think it is relevant. It's going to be relevant down the line, but that's not all though. Let's actually talk about some of the actual Johto references that we have seen in the actual current games of Skull and Violet. Well, there have been loads of references to Johto and Unova, right? Now, if you've been playing Indigo Disc, you've probably seen a shit ton, okay? So many references to Unova. They've been everywhere, but that's not all. There are also references to Johto. For example, if you talk to Perrin, she will give you a sports ball. Now, the sports ball is something we have not seen since, I think, Heart Gold and Soul Silver, because the sports ball is a specific Pokeball that's used in the bug catching contest back in Heart Gold, Soul Silver, which is pretty crazy. And also, Perrin herself could be a reference to the photographer in Heart Gold, Soul Silver. If you guys ever played Heart Gold, Soul Silver, there's a photographer that goes around taking pictures and well she herself parent could be a reference to that speaking of which parent in herself is already related to like adaman from legends arceus but that's besides the point what i want to say is that she's already there referencing a bunch of johto stuff but if you actually play pokemon uh you know scarlet violet played the indigo disc the sports ball is one of the Johto references, but there's also Johto music, like old school uh, gold silver music from Johto that can play in Kitakami. Like if you actually walk around Kitakami, you will find places where there, if you use your actual camera to take photos, they will actually play Johto music, which is crazy. But again, that's not all. There's even more. For example, the exclusive Pokemon for Kitakami, the exclusive Pokemon between the two games, were both Johto Pokemon. I think it was Apom and uh, Gligar. I think those were the two Pokemon, which are both Gen 2 Pokemon. So again, a lot of references, a lot of hints, okay? So many small hints that it's supposed to be like based on that. If you think about it also, if you take Kitakami and you take Blueberry Academy, the two of those re like places, they're both somewhat based on specific locations that are related. So Kitakami feels more traditional, set in the past, right? A game set in the literal past of Pokemon, uh, which is just how Johto feels. Johto is a more old school region. It feels more old and it feels more like, you know, like Japanese in its design. Whereas the Indigo Disc is more modern, set in the future, more futuristic, and it's also based on more Unova, because it's literally in Unova, right? It's right next to the Unova region, or in the Unova region, and Unova is based on the United States, specifically based around New York and that part of the world, which is more futuristic, more set in the future, more, that's at least like what they design it to look like. And that also makes more sense to Unova. This is why I am always been saying, and even in the previous video, what I'm saying is that I think we're going to get both next year. I think both are going to be there. But I think the actual Johto references are very noticeable. There is a bunch of more that I just don't know off the top of my head. I think one of the easiest ones is maybe the patches on your character's arms. Like if you're playing Scarlet or Violet, your actual patches for your academy will either be gold or silver, which is a obvious Johto reference. Very simple and small. And you might be thinking to yourself, no, that means nothing. But again, the small references are the ones that matter. The small stuff, the small little things are usually the things that actually have an impact and could be a hint towards what's to come next. Now, people want to discredit or go against the possibility of Johto next, but I want to talk about another thing which I think, you know, makes the most sense to me, which is because it's the anniversary, right? Next year, in 2024, it is the anniversary of the original releases of Gold and Silver. It's going to be 25 years, ladies and gentlemen, 25 years. It's time to celebrate, okay? It's time to celebrate. It's time for everybody to get happy and excited because, yeah, we're celebrating the, you know, anniversary of the second generation of Pokemon. So what would make the most sense to do for that, you know, period of time? Well, the most logical thing to me, at least, is release a remake of that generation. It just makes total sense to me. Again, the little hints in the games and just the stuff that's being talked about, it all perfectly points towards that direction. At least it does to me. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm, I'm mistaken. Maybe I'm I'm overthinking this. Maybe I'm over overdoing it. Maybe my brain is just a little bit too um, nuts about the stuff. Maybe I think about the stuff way too much, but I do think it makes the most amount of sense, at least in my opinion. At least the way it's pointing right now, it seems like the most logical thing, at least to me. But 
Again, there's enough hints, there's enough stuff that's pointing in this direction. Let's talk now about what is the actual release schedule for this? What, where will this fit in with all the other releases? Because we already talked about a little bit about this, but let's talk about it further. So, I think this game would release next year. I think a Johto remake or a Johto game could release next year. Again, I already mentioned it, but it is the 25 year anniversary. Now, Pokemon does tend to do big stuff when there is anniversaries. And when I say big anniversaries, I mean when it's the 20 years, 25 years, 30 years, uh, 10 year, 15 year, whatever is like the, every like five uh, years or so, when there is a big anniversary to be had, they will make a big deal out of it or they will release something big to coincide with it. But that's not all. If you think about it, Johto is the only generation that has not been remade in 3D yet besides, I guess, Gen 5. Because everything else has already had its remake, right? We've already had Gen 1 remakes in 3D with Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. We've had uh, Gen 3 remakes with Oras. We've had uh, Gen 4 remakes with BDSP. And we've had, uh, you know, Gen 5 most likely will be coming afterwards and next. But that's the only other one that hasn't gotten any love. So the only two generations that don't exist in 3D yet are Johto and Unova. Both two regions that are being referenced the most right now the most right now in this specific set of games so yes they're being referenced in this dlc more than anything else like those two specifically and more so unova because i think the unova game is going to be bigger and i think whatever game we're going to get it's going to release next year so i'm going to talk a little bit about the actual schedules here and how this is going to work at least in my opinion because the game we're going to get, and I'm going to talk about this a little bit later as well, which is, is it going to be a remake, a remaster, a paradox game, a legends game? I'm going to already say now, I think it's a remake, just a basic remake, but what does that mean for its release time? Well, if we look at how BDSP released, right? Like, let's actually talk about how did BDSP work and how did Legends Arceus work? Because BDSP was a very basic remake, and it came out in November of 2021, if I'm not mistaken, right? It came out in 2021 of November. It was part of Generation 8, right? When it came out... Only a few months later, so November, you're halfway through November, you do about one of December, so that's a month and a half, and then half, of, so basically two months later, in the beginning of 2022, we got Pokemon Legends Arceus. Now, both of these two games were announced at the same exact day back in 2021 during Pokemon, uh, Pokemon Day, specifically announced on Pokemon Day, both of them, both of them announced the exact same day time okay both were announced the same time same moment same everything okay it is crazy but they were both announced around the same time which also means something very important that it's a possibility that if we do get johto announced that it will be the first game to come out if they announce a johto and unova game because it's highly possible that that could happen they could announce them both on pokemon day in just about like two months now guys like it's not long to go now we're at the end of december now and Guess what? They could announce it, um, you know, on Pokemon Day, both these games, because we don't have a long time to leave, like, left now to actually wait. But when they do announce it, we will get ourselves an interesting result to look at. So that's just something to talk about. But here's the thing. I think the release date makes the most sense to be in 2024 for a Johto remake. It's just because it lines up perfectly to be with the 25-year anniversary, and it also lines up perfectly to be with, um, you know, how BDSP came out, right? Because that's the same thing. And also, Pokemon games, they tend to release in November. Like, November is the usual usual release date minus Legends Arceus which was the like you know that's the only game that released you know outside of the regular like release schedule like it is really just a little bit different okay I don't know if that's the right way to put it but it is a little bit of a different one it works a little bit differently in terms of how things work with it so just keep that in mind it's a bit of a different game uh, but as for like this game though I do think it's going to make the most amount of sense for it to release in that time frame now again I could be wrong. I could be mistaken. I want to know your guys' thoughts and opinions on it, but that's pretty much where I put my my like you know my money at. I think that the most logical place is November 2024, next year, 25 anniversary. Perfect. There's not really much else I could say in regards to that. I think that perfectly like summarizes it, but. I think it pretty much gets that across. So now let's talk about what kind of game is this going to be? It's going to be a remake, a remaster, a paradox game. And we're going to again talk a little bit about how does this work with the Unova games? How does this work with everything else? And But let's first talk about what kind of game is this going to be? So 
I don't think that whatever game we get next is going to be a Legends game. I don't think whatever Johto game we get is going to be a Legends game of so any sorts or a game set in the past or anything like that. I think it's just going to be a basic remake because that's the only generation so far that's kind of missing a basic remake, right? Not counting, I guess, X and Y and Unova because those are the only other two that you can th really think of. But if you think about the other ones, they haven't had a basic like 3D remake, like specifically a game made in 3D. Um, yet right like they just haven't had that yet and it's been a long time okay you gotta understand it's been longer since we saw johto in a pokemon game than since we saw black and white so it only makes sense that to celebrate the actual like beginning of a sorry the end of this generation and also to celebrate you know celebrate the 25 year anniversary would be to cap off the year of 2024 right by giving us a Johto game and then starting off 2025, because keep in mind, this is very important because this this none of this works without both of these games coming out at the same time, because I think they're going to give us a Unova and Johto game. I, I'm pretty certain of it. Like I am 99% sure it's going to be the two of them and not just one. Like I don't think it's going to be just a single one. And another thing I reason I want to actually bring up is a specific reference, and I want to specifically take this exact moment here and bring this up, but if you guys played the new Detective Pikachu game, there is actually a really cool reference to both Pokemon, like, you know, gold and silver. There's basically two paintings, one painting of Ho-Oh and one painting of Lugia, and I already covered this a little bit, but the name of the painting on one side for Ho-Oh is called Golden Sunrise, right? And meanwhile, the other painting with Lugia is called painting the paintings called silver waves okay pokemon golden sunrise and pokemon silver waves are perfect names for pokemon games especially remakes okay pokemon golden sunrise and silver waves what the hell man those would be perfect names okay literally the perfect names to use for this like i'm not even kidding i don't know what else would work as, as well as this like this is just literally perfect naming scheme for this like i, I literally can't think of anything else that would work as good as that so why am i bringing this up because that's just another reference and i forgot to mention that in the reference section but i think it's another big reference as to why these games make sense like why would they be mentioning golden sunrise and silver waves why would they mention that like why would they even be mentioned in detective pikachu right this is a game that came out this year detective pikachu this new detective pikachu game came out this year Pika detective pikachu returns right if you haven't played it i played it not the most fun game it's actually a pretty bad game but it did come out this year and the fact that it's had it, even it has a bunch of hints towards johto makes total sense plus those two names are the perfect names for basic remakes right it's the perfect names for it it's the perfect naming scheme perfect way to call them there's no other way to put it those are just the perfect ways to do them and like i said if you think about like all the stuff that needs to come out, right? We already had BDSP. That was a basic remake. And I think we're going to get a similar thing with Johto and it's going to do the same formula, right? Okay, 2024. They announce it on January, or sorry, February 27th. They announce, hey, you're going to get Golden Sunrise and Silver Waves as well as Paradox Unova, right? They're going to announce that. Boom. Awesome. Then they're not going to tell us the release dates for a while. They might just tell us which year they're releasing. They might just say, hey, 2024, you're going to get Golden Sunrise and Silver Waves, right? That's what you're going to get in that year. Awesome. Great. Cool. Thank you, Nintendo, Game Freak, and Pokemon Company. And then they might tell us, and Unova is going to come out in 2025. Why are they doing this? Well, to celebrate the 25-year anniversary of Gold and Silver, we're releasing Golden Golden Sunrise and Silver Waves to celebrate the, you know, the release of these games. Awesome. And then to celebrate the 15-year anniversary next year, they're releasing... Unova, because remember, Black and White are celebrating their their 15 year anniversary in 2025, right? Keep that in mind. They're celebrating their anniversary in 2025, but Gold and Silver are celebrating their anniversary in 2024. So if they do the exact same release schedule, the exact same one, the identical one, they are perfectly set up and perfectly poised to make the perfect again i really mean the perfect release schedule that looks just like the release schedule of bdsb and legends Arceus. at least that's where i ended and that's where i think it now what's the game gonna be remake remaster paradox legends which one of those remake because it hasn't had a regular remake we haven't seen a regular remake of johto in a long time we haven't seen johto in, the, in its regular form in a long time and it just makes total sense. Now you might be thinking, well, if it's a remake, what kind of remake will it be? Will it be a will it be a Let's Go style remake in 3D, or will people be angry if it looks like BDSP, right? The Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl. Like if it looks like that, will people hate it? Well, this is where I think the biggest issue about a Johto remake lays, right? 
Is it going to be a let, Let's Go style game? Is it going to be an Oras, like Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire style game? Or is it going to be a BDSP style game? I think out of those three options, an Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire style game would make the most sense, right? It's the, the, the one that like would probably make the most sense, look the best, and probably would work the best if they made it like that. And that's, of course, if Game Freak was to make it. There is a chance that this game could be made by Ilka again, right? Oh, Ilka is the company that made Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. A set of games that are so hated and people are so angry about those games that I would doubt that Game Freak would want to let them do another game given how people responded. Now, I personally... I don't have the biggest gripes with it. I don't think BDSP is the best set of games, but I also don't think they're the worst set of Pokemon games ever created. Uh, they have their issues. The fact that we're made in Unity made them very easy to like hack and change stuff in. Um, they also had a lot of, uh, let's just put it like this, a lot of bugs, okay? The, the games are prop full, chock full, smack full of, uh, of bugs and issues, which are undeniable. You can't avoid them. It, literally, they're so on the nose, it's crazy. Um, that's one thing you have to keep in mind as well. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff like that that you have to keep in mind, right? There's a lot of things like that that you have to just remember are, uh, are an issue to begin with. So, yeah. Um, if they do make games and they, if, if it's Ilka making them again, then I think a lot of people will be angry. And I don't think it's going to be the best set of remakes. I think the best case scenario here is a Let's Go styled game. Now, Let's Go were not good games. Let's just put it like that. Let's Go, Pikachu, and Eevee. They were fine, but they were not very good games. They were very empty. If you finish the story, you're done with the game. There's really nothing to do. There, are some, there is some multiplayer gameplay you could do in the game, but I swear, I swear it's just empty, okay? The game is just empty on content. There's nothing to do. And if they're going to be remaking these, let's be honest, they're not going to be remaking Pokemon Heart, Gold, and Soul Silver. And I know a lot of people are going to be like, oh, but you know, Heart, Gold, Soul Silver makes the most sense, you know? I want Heart, Gold, Soul Silver. Let's be real. They're not going to remake Heart, Gold, Soul Silver. They're going to be remaking Gold and Silver. And Gold and Silver, if we're going to be real, didn't have as many features as Pokemon Heart, Gold, Soul Silver. Because Heart, Gold, Soul Silver had like what? A Battle Frontier. You had, um, Kanto had multiple things. You had a bunch of event Pokemon, right? You could even, like, get the, uh, the, uh, you know, you could even get, um, Hoenn Pokemon in Heart, Gold, Soul, Silver. You can get, uh, you know, Gen 4 Pokemon. Like, you get Pokemon all the way up to Generation 4 in Heart, Gold, Soul, Silver. But if they want to make a basic little remake they can quickly sell that doesn't take too much effort, they can easily get out and release in this time frame, then that game is Gold and Silver remakes. Not Heart, Gold, Soul, Silver but gold and silver, which means only Pokemon up to Gen 2. So you would only have Johto Pokemon and Kanto Pokemon. That's the only thing. Only have those. No Gen 3, no Gen 4, none of those. Maybe the occasional one just for references, but that's what I think. And I would honestly be very disappointed if they did that. I think Hot Gold, Soul, Silver are the best Pokemon remakes. And I think if you want to make the best Pokemon remake, I think you need to make it a Hot Gold Soul Silver remake, like a remake of a remake, right? If you're going to recreate Hot Gold Soul Silver, I think it would be the best choice. Now, of course, they're not going to do that. They're going to be recreating Gold and Silver, which means less features, less Pokemon, less fun, okay? Less things to do, less stuff to explore. One of the best things about Hot Gold Soul Silver, you can catch a bunch of old legendaries. I think getting your hands on like uh, Rayquaza. Kyogre and Groudon is so much fun because you need to like complete your game, do a bunch of stuff in, in you know, uh, the Kanto region. And then you can talk, I think, to Professor Oak and stuff. And he'll give you these, they'll give you these special orbs, right? Like the, the uh, you know, the red orb, the blue orb, etc. The jade orb is, uh, for example, for, um, for Rayquaza. And you gotta go to a specific location, a hidden location to get your hands on, you know, Groudon or Kyogre, depending on if you're playing Heart, Gold, or Soul, Silver, and if you have both of those Pokemon in your party, and you go and show it to Professor Oak, I think, or Mr. Pokemon, I don't know which one of them, they'll give you a special final Jade, which is like the, the, the one for Rayquaza, and then you can go and capture Rayquaza too. I think small stuff like that is really awesome, and I'm gonna be real with you, they've been doing a lot of stuff like that in the new DLC, the Indigo Disc. There's been a lot of small things and events like that that I think are awesome, and I think that's a good indication, and hopefully they remember Remember that and they keep those things going into gold and silver remakes because I'm going to be real with you. I'm very scared. Johto is my favorite generation. Hot Gold, Soul, Silver are my favorite Pokemon games. I love them to death. I think they're the best Pokemon games ever created in terms of just like sheer amount of content you can do and stuff you can do and just exploration and things. Um, and the fact that they are Gen 4 games essentially is a bit of a weird one, but it does make the games like just perfect in my opinion. I think they are just amazing set of games. But here's the problem. They will never be remaking Hard Gold Soul Silver. They're always going to be going and remaking the original versions of them, which is going to be Gold and Silver. And Gold and Silver have their issues. Gold and Silver 
don't feature Pokemon up to Gen 4. Gold and Silver are not as good, okay? They're not as good as Heart Gold and Soul Silver. They're lesser. The same way that, in my opinion, Diamond and Pearl are wor verse, wor worse versions of Platinum, right? I think Platinum is the superior Gen 4 game. It's the better one. And I think we have the same issue here. We're going to get a, a lackluster-esque version of the two. Um, but that pretty much summarizes it. So let's kind of summarize up everything we've talked about. Let's summarize everything we've just mentioned right now. Okay, so first things first. There are multiple hints by the leakers. That, that image I talked about, that whole image is honestly enough proof for me. Like that image proves to me that it's going to be Johto and Unova next year. Like that one image, that one post he made is enough proof for me. Like that proves it to me. But that's not all. We also have a lot of references to the game in Pokemon Indigo Disc. Kitakami and Scarlet and Violet. Okay, there's a lot of references. You see Johto being referenced here and there. There are uh, Pokemon that are being special exclusives that are references. There are musics, uh, music from, you know, Johto that seems to be referencing. And this is just a bunch of small stuff that references Johto. Like, there's a bunch of little things that reference Johto. But again, that's not all. We also have the 25-year anniversary. It's the big thing, right? So 25-year anniversary is the big one that's happening next year. And it makes total sense to be giving us a new Pokemon Johto game to, you know, celebrate that anniversary, to kind of celebrate and get excited and give people the reason to be excited. That makes total sense. But then, of course, what game is it going to be? Well, the most logical thing to be is a remake, a basic remake, because I don't think a Legends game is going to happen. That's too big of an adventure, too big of a thing for them to do. And... It doesn't feel like it fits as well. A remaster makes no sense either. I think it's just going to be a proper remake, just like we've had them in the past, just like we've had with BDSB, Oras, Heart Gold, Soul Silver back in the day. You know, just a standard, or even File Red Leaf Green, if you want to put it like that, or even Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. Just, you know, a standard remake. That's the way I view it. It's going to be a remake of sorts. How it's going to look and feel, I'm a little bit torn on that, but that's pretty much where I would put it right now. So ladies and gentlemen, that pretty much summarizes my things on that. Again, like I said, you might be thinking, oh, this is not going to happen. I don't know. Johto is not going to happen. But seriously, it's in the pudding. The leaker has hinted it. The games are hinting it. The 25-year anniversary is hinting it. And just the logic, just do some thinking. It makes sense, okay? I am on the Johto train, choo choo choo, all the way to the all the way to the bank, okay? Because I am certain it's gonna happen. But that doesn't mean that I don't think Unova's gonna happen. I am certain we're gonna get both of these. I think we're gonna get both of them. I just think so. There's no way I can view this in any other way. I think we're gonna get both. I think both will happen. We're gonna see how that turns out, but I think both of them will be happening. Now, as I mentioned in my previous Unova video as I mentioned in the Unova section, is that I think that there is a logic to how they do these things. There's a logic, right? Every generation has to go in a certain way. And how they did it with Legends and BDSP kind of gives you already a prediction for how they're going to do this as well. It kind of already gives you a bit of an idea of what they might do, where they might go with it, how they might approach it. All of that is already being hinted to us in one shape or form already, right? It's already been, you know, hinted to us all, one shape or form already through stuff in these games, through hints in the games and stuff like that. And of course, we can't forget the literal leaker included a picture of Kanto and Johto, Unova and Paldea for 2024. All four of those make sense. But like I said, that's pretty much the end for the Johto section here. This is the end of the Johto video. Now, I'll be making a video where I do a combination of this video and the Unova video and some extra thoughts at the end after making both of these with some of like, you know, my extra thoughts about what I think about these things. So stay tuned for that video. It's going to be like way longer. It's going to be a compilation of this one and the last one. And I'm going to give you some extra thoughts and opinions of mine as to what I think. So thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next one.